Now you say you didn't have a whole lot of money, so, but how much did you start with? Like, what did you start your Amazon business with? Well, I started with just forty dollars. I didn't have that much money, so I went to the clearance section at Walmart. That's how I started. Hi, and welcome to Your Selling Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Kirk, aka Your Selling Guide. I'm a small town girl who took a big risk and quit a steady corporate desk job to travel the U.S. in an RV. Along the way, I started selling on Amazon, grew a seven-figure business, visited all the lower 48 states, bought a farm, and today I am still doing what I love to do, selling on Amazon while helping other sellers do it too. Each week, I will share Amazon tips and tricks and bring in guests to share their stories, expertise, and tips on the platforms that they use. Think of this as a sit down with your Amazon bestie where you can learn, ask, start, and grow your online selling business. Welcome to Your Selling Pod. Hey crew and welcome back. Today I am super excited because I have Cynthia Amos joining me for the podcast. Now Cynthia and I have met in my Bolo group, I think last year, if not a little bit earlier than that. And we immediately hit it off. She was in the RA100 group where we video chat every month there. And she just has so much insight into not just Amazon, but eBay and all the other marketplaces. She has been selling since 2019. But before I tell you too much about everything that she does, I'll just jump into the episode and she can tell you herself. All right. With that, welcome, Cynthia, to the podcast. Thank you, Nikki, for having me. That's amazing. I really really was expecting this day you kind of imagine how much <laughs> ah awesome so i know i kind of recapped it in the beginning a little bit about you but i absolutely love following your social media because not only do you sell on amazon but you sell on other marketplaces as well like ebay so i'll let you take it away so how did you get into online selling and what were you kind of doing before you got into it <laughs> perfect so uh, I born in Honduras, Central America, and uh, I have a degree in agriculture and he's an engineer in agribusiness. After that, I graduated, I went to work as a research development for a company that produces uh, the chicken in the end of the chicken part, you know, the, the chicken that go to the, to the market. Uh, all radio process and then after that I applied for a company that is Smithfield here in the United States. I didn't knew the English at all. So I learned about the possible questions, all the possible questions that they can make, you know, and I <laughs> I really learned all the possible answers for I can say in English, right? It gave me the opportunity to came to the country it was so cool because is I know all the people coming, you know, had the possibility for coming for a country is uh, legal, right? So how, coming legal to the country was a really big win for me. And I was working as a manager trainee for a big farm or sack farm or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it until I became manager for one of the farms. It's a millionaire farm. It, it, we was producing a lot of piggies for sent to the fabric, you know. Love yeah. piggies. I love them. <laughs> they are so cute, you know. Pig and pink. And I love them. So it was one of the best times. What it made that work no than good is the people, usually. Because it's really hard to find people that like to work in, you know, in the agriculture industry. Um, it's for many reasons. One thing is the payment is usually not that good. But when I was in the manager position, I was working beside uh, as a side hustle for Angway. I don't know if you hear about it. They, uh -huh. It's a multi-level company. So a friend of mine invited me to that. And it was so cool because that opened my my eyes to have a different opportunities, not just to work, right? If to have a side hustle. And I was doing in there like $800 by month. But when I was researching, right, for see if I can grow in more, I came across to Amazon. But what it makes my attention is 
I was you doing uh, so when I was a, as a manager because I want to quit that job, you know, trying to find another job. And I went to delivery packages for Amazon for a contractor fund. If you don't know, you can have a business for, uh, you know, the delivery part too as a contractor for Amazon. And so I worked for the company and I was so, so fascinated that they was deliver we was delivering even dog food and all that. So I start to get more into, you know, investigate and research and go to Google and YouTube. And then I come, came across to your videos, <laughs> which is so cool. <laughs> And I came across two your videos and Reese results too, because in that uh-huh. time it was no more. It was just you and him, right? Talk to talk about uh, Amazon. They was really truthful what you say because it's a lot of resellers out there. They you know they will tell you a lot about Amazon and it's easy and they try to sell you something, but you are all the time are true, you know, teaching and all that. And then a Spanish woman too that she started because you know you can tell for my accent <laughs> you know I was still feeling more comfortable and that's how I became an Amazon seller first really before the other platforms so I didn't have money at all right because I don't know we we come in for a good background sometimes for the college university and all that but they don't teach you how to manage your money they don't mm-hmm. teach you you know how to be entrepreneur they don't you go in there for pretty much learning how to work for somebody else <laughs> you know so you have pre- i love that your name is the lady hustler right and because you were literally hustling to get mm-hmm. into the country by just learning English for these very specific things. So you've been a hustler ever back then. So that's really cool. Mm-hmm. I like that you did Amazon like deliveries because my younger brother, at one point, all so I have two brothers, everyone in the family was working for Amazon basically. So I did selling. My older brother worked in the Amazon warehouse and my younger brother did the same thing that you did. So he would deliver um, packages for Amazon mm-hmm. to people's house. So it was kind of interesting. So that's cool that you did that also. Now, you say you didn't have a whole lot of money, so, but how much did you start with? Like, what did you start your Amazon business with? Well, I started with just $40. 40 That's it. Yeah, $40. Because nice. when when I was studying Amazon, you know, when you start Amazon, you have more time than money usually. Because if you're looking something, as I hustle, it's because usually you need the money, right? Or you want to more money for any goal. So um, I didn't have that much money. So I went to the clearance section at Walmart. That's how I started. And I have many products for the Angway that I was selling. So I didn't have money, but I was already invested in these products for Angway. And I was selling in there. Don't tell nobody because that's not, <laughs> they don't allow you to, to sell them in there. I was going to say, can you do that? <laughs> no, <laughs> you cannot do that because it's a direct, sales company so you cannot just sell like a personal you know like a person to person but I was doing it because I had so much inventory and that's where Amazon opened my eyes right to okay you know you can sell and I started to learn which videos had to do in it because I didn't have money I had to pay for courses or stuff so right. I had to learn you know, with the Amazon Seller University, with YouTube videos, with Reese videos, and then I was coming across, and I think I've, I've been watching all your videos, even the, <laughs> you know, since the first one that you started, you say, okay, this is a video for, you know, for me, for my journey, and, you know, see how I am. Remember that one? How yeah, I yeah, see, I, it's, I'm like all whispering on the side of the RV because yeah, I'm like embarrassed exactly. of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Then, and I was like, okay, like, let's let's watch these videos. And that's how I learned. You know, I haven't paid a course yet because yeah. I am very if I hyper. I cannot be like a long time and you know, just watching and watching, watching. I was watching one of your videos and I was doing it then after, you know. That's how I am. Oh, yeah. I cannot be like a okay, let's do it, you know. So... Yeah, there's definitely, you don't have to buy anything. And I always tell people that I'm very open. Like you don't have to, I have a course that I created like two years ago now. So I've been selling for a long time 
And it's like a step-by-step -step for people who want to learn that way and, of course, have the funds. But everything is out there on YouTube for those who don't have the funds but have the time to, like, dig in and, like, find it all. Because it's there. You just have to, like, dig around. So the, the thing I offer is just, like, if you want it simple and there's that. But, yeah, you don't have to. Besides Keepa, really, which didn't used to be paid, it used to be free way back in the day, it was good. But besides Keepa, there's not really any paid things that you need. And technically, you don't need it, but it does help you. You don't need to really invest a lot of money to start. So that is so interesting that you started with $40. I do, I did. And then, then I come across because, I, you know, you need money for, for if you want to make really good money on Amazon, you need money for invest. So I start to come across what I can sell, you know, and you know, when you start to watching videos like that, more yep. videos coming like are related, you know, that's how the YouTube works. And so I was coming across to eBay and then Poshmark and all that. And that was in 2000, I started in Amazon in 2019. So in 2000, like in November, December, like at the Q4 for that year, which was crazy. Then <laughs> in uh, January, January to February, I was starting in eBay and Poshmark and Mercari at the same time because I was cross-listing before the everybody mentioned about cross-listing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let's see if you I can put more eyes because for me, it was making sense, right? Okay, yeah. probably you know, these and these or different people can see the, the items. And then how that's how I start to put in that money that was making for those, you know, platforms to Amazon. And that's how I've been building since then. Do you use any software? Because I know there is software to cross list. Or do you just manually like keep track of everything and pull down a listing when it sells somewhere else? Back then, right now, the biggest two companies that you can find for cross listing is List Perfectly and Vendu. So Bendu, it was the first one. Before Bendu, you had to pay for even for Brie. It was so crazy. So I never, I never like I continue with their system. Now I think they are more better. But I use because I am very cheap. <laughs> I am very cheap all the time. And looking the ways that to reduce costs and all that. Because it's my management brain all the time. Uh -huh. I'm working. Okay, how it can reduce. So now you can use like a software they go flip they don't have a new phone but you can you say that you know it's a chrome extension that you can use it for close listing and it's for free and you can even um promote the software in they give you like uh gift cards for amazon which is cool you know you work um, sometimes it's called, something. it's called flip. flip yeah like that okay. just like that it's You'll for give free me your so. uh affiliate code and we'll put it in the show notes Oh, of course, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you can you can try, and they got uh, numbers, statistics numbers that you can check it out too. You know, and see how if what platforms work or what brands works for you and all that, which is so cool. And mm -hmm. I really love, you know, Amazon usually pays for part of our bills, but I really enjoy to doing the three part. You know, I love it. And I feel like uh, it's nothing compared, like uh, you find this item that is $1 at the thrift store and you sell it for 40 which is, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes even hundreds of dollars. Because I found the first two items that I sold in these platforms, first it was items for my house, right? But the ones that I invest, really invest for selling, it was a Burberry backpack that I found it for only $2. And I sell it for $400. Wow, so that, was, that was so crazy for me. And then my husband was like, uh, "Really? <laughs> I can't yeah. believe that. <laughs> he wasn't believe believe that somebody can pay that much money for you know for a brand like that." And it does. It's many brands right now. It's very competitive. So these companies, three stores, learn how to even put their own website and know what items they need to put in those weight size and the actioning and all that. But before, like a three years ago, before even the pandemic, you can find items like that all the time, you know, and flip it really fast. It's just fascinating. I love it. There's nothing quite like that sound of a new order coming through on your Amazon account. But do you know how much you're actually making on those orders? Your Selling Podcast is excited to partner with Sellerboard. 
Sellerboard is an accurate profit analytics for Amazon sellers as well as eBay. With just a quick login to the app or your dashboard on a desktop, you can see what your true numbers are for all of your Amazon orders by the day, week, or month. I love to use it to forecast out how I'm going to do that month and use it for my planning. Sellerboard doesn't just tell you your profit though, they actually do so much more. So if you're creating a private label listing or you're making your own bundles, you can use Sellerboard to get reviews for your product pages. Sellerboard is a robust profit analytics tool and I use it every day in my Amazon business. You can try Sellerboard yourself, connect it to your Amazon or eBay accounts and see how it works for you. Get two months free by going to yoursellingguide.com slash sellerboard profit. Again, that's yoursellingguide.com slash sellerboard profit. Try Sellerboard today and get the true profit picture of how your business is doing. So when you uh, started doing all that and you did all of them, like back in the beginning, were you still working full time or was there a point where you quit? No, I quit. Uh, forget to say that part. I quit because they was expecting a lot for us without, without the people and the production. And I don't want to make somebody else's business because I don't have the right people. And so and then uh, all the headache is that mental health thing is a really thing, you know, yeah. because I was so stressful. I was working a lot more than I worked for Amazon, you know. I was working 24-7 sometimes every day because I didn't have people. And then the south was needing help sometimes in the night, you know. Or sometimes you had to go in there because it's a hurricane and, you know, you, you're wondering if they are fine. So it was it was a really... 24 7 work for somebody else you know so yeah. I decide I decide to quit and I was expecting to do good with Amway you know <laughs> oh so you quit around the Amway time yeah exactly oh, okay because I was I was making a hundred dollars by month, and I was like okay so probably I can replace my job right and my income for the job and I am very blessed that my husband make really good money you know so he can provide and pay all the bills and we can live in really comfortable without me working, but it's not my, it's not my, I, I cannot be like a, okay, give me for, go and make my nails, right? Because it's so, it's not. Right. Because you're a hustler know. and you got to yeah. hustle. It's just like, we can't sit still. We got to be doing something all the time. Yeah. You, <laughs> I, I believe that you are the same, that you, you are probably are watching something and you are like, okay, let's go and see what we can find, you know? That's how I am well, because I can't be like that. I've been trying to take at least one day off a week because all through 2020 and even into 2021, uh, I was real good last year, but I would not take any, I was just working all day, every day. And so I've been trying to take at least one day off a week, but it's funny because sometimes I have a day off. I'm like, I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. My husband is, I am taking Sundays all the time for social media, for everything, right? Like nice. I, I try to schedule, like you say, everything in social media for, you know, relax because it's very consuming though, you know? It's like, what idea can come in with content? I don't know how you're doing it and how you've been consistently, you know, like I'm doing every day for the past, I don't know, six years because that is really time consuming. But Sundays, even Sundays, sometimes I am like a, Okay, relax. Try to because my hobby is to watch series, right? Any mystery, suspense series, I love it because I like to put my yeah. brain to thinking, who is, you know, who it was, it? you know, some kind of things like that. And sometimes I am like, uh, hmm, maybe I got to <laughs> something online where I can find, you know, and can I cross sometimes with the social media because I love it. I just love connect with people, you know. To talk with somebody else because it, reselling is very, very like a lonely if you yep. don't talk if you you don't have people that talk the same language because my husband hated it he don't like it he don't even want to learn about it you know he don't like it at all so I cannot talk with him about it because he's like a uh huh you know like a it changed the subject really fast and then social media that's my like a take off like uh, okay let's share you know see what who else is out in there and i love it i just love that part 
Yeah, that's why I was really excited. I invited you to come to the meetup in Florida, and I was really excited that you came because it is just like talking to people in person, especially like you said, your husband is like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. When you don't have anyone around you, you can talk to, it can be super lonely and you're like, things go wrong. So I'm always talking about no matter what the community that you are, wherever you found them, if you found them on, um, you know, I don't do discord, but I think you do discord. Like there's all different communities everywhere. So no matter where you like to be, just find a community that you can talk to other sellers. That's nice. Also, like if you get rude responses, that's not the community for you. Uh, but like a nice, positive, encouraging where you can vent, but you can also like learn and ask questions. So, yeah, it, it can be super lonely. I totally get it. At what point did you start to pull out a profit or I guess? Yeah. So you make a profit. But then at what point did you start to pull out a profit and pay yourself? So my story is a, it kind of really <laughs> awkward because the first year I didn't make that much money, like probably five thousand dollars in total. But uh revenue like a forty thousand, but the reason was because I was deactivated like a three times in Amazon. So for like a four months, I was out completely from Amazon. You know because they are deactivate you. You are like a, a month, like a two month, one month and two weeks before they coming back to you know give you access again to your account. So the twenty twenty was really hard for me because the reasons I was selling a lot for me and that was a lot because coming for forty dollars for me was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was pretty much almost what I was making in my job with revenue, right? No profit. But I start to profit in 2021, you know, because all those incentives out there, they they boost a lot ourselves too in 2021 you know and then uh, i start to pay around the six months in 21 like of june 2021 around there but okay. this is how i work usually i put almost everything back and i treat myself with the other platforms you know like uh i put almost everything back to amazon this is because that's the reason i haven't been taken along because i'm doing that you know Mm -hmm. So if you are want something that month, so I pay myself for the other platforms, you know, and then I keep it rolling like that. And that's how I'm making $20,000 by month right now, because I'm putting all that, up, okay, back, back, and try to build in, in that way. So for now, Amazon don't pay me nothing for now. So, okay, that's interesting. I should have asked it a different way. So you're making yeah. money. Are I guess, okay, I have a couple questions. Which right. platform do you like the most? That's one question. And number two is, is there's certain platforms that are more paying your bills daily than like Amazon. You're just continuing to build, to grow, to have that more sales. Yeah. So Amazon is paying by yourself about the cost and, you know, all the tools and all that. And I like Amazon because the velocity. Each of the platforms have their own thing, you know, because Amazon has the velocity and even you can sell anything that you can think about it and for a lot more profit. So, for example, you will have around sometimes 100% of the profit, you know, a little, three times more of what you cost of buying it is. So that's what I love about eBay. And it makes me feel like uh, you have like a Shopify store, like uh, you can control what sales you can roll or what coupons you can have, you know, stuff like that. You can do that with Amazon, but with eBay is more like a more in control. You are more in control of everything in there. And I love the control, you know? Yeah. So pretty much eBay is pay a lot of my, like, uh, for example, we help people to Honduras. We help them with the um, eBay profits. And he's paying me, he has been paying me every month, you know, for pay some bills. What else we do for that? And I help my father and my mother every month too. So it comes from there, pretty much. So that's why my my in my social media you will you will not just see Amazon because Amazon for me is more is more like a okay, velocity, right? You find one yeah. item, 30, you buy 30, you sell them. What my point with Amazon is to building and the way they in the future probably they can pay the whole thing, the bills, 
and then get back a little bit more down with eBay, just doing it for joy, you know, for enjoying and all that. And even I had two stores. I got one that is public because few want to start an eBay store and you in social media and you, st- you have your eBay store, you should have probably a one that everybody can see, right? Because it's not good for the eBay algorithm that you put a lot of eyes and nobody's buying it because it tells the eBay, uh, um, you know, algorithm that, okay, your items are not good, you know? <laughs> so, because it's not selling, it's not, conver- not making conversion. So either, either your title is bad or your photos are bad. So I have one day is public and the other one they really make my money and a lot more money. So the one that you see out there in social media is usually the one that you have put as example, you know, like you can do in that and all that. And sometimes to even, even put money to Amazon because it's tough making really good money in, in Amazon. You have to be really good, you know, <laughs> like I'm finding the really good items, the profit are good and don't get tank. You know, it's really, really hard these times. I feel like, it, you know. When you say that you're the eBay's public, is it like they can search it with name or with your, I know that's just something I did because I don't sell on eBay. I've never like thought of or knew about. Right. Obviously your other one, your private one is public because people are buying it, but you're just like, yeah. it's not. Yeah you're not putting it out there. And the, yeah, I don't put it in, in the social media, you know, because for example, on in my YouTube on Instagram and TikTok, I don't, nobody knows which is my other eBay store, you know, because I want the, all the sales that is converting and they are organically, is no like a, okay, let's go what Cynthia have in there in the store, you know? Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. So the other one, of course, is public. Anybody, if you research for a pan of jeans, a pair of jeans that you like it, and you're coming across to my listing, you you will find it probably, you know, you will buy it. But it's not like a direct link in my social media to go and see, you know, to that. Got story. it. Okay. That makes sense. That's a good tip. Have you noticed how, like, I've just seen on people who do eBay talking about this, that, like, some of the Goodwill prices are crazy. Like they're ridiculously high. They are. Do you source yes, Goodwill I, or do you like other kind of thrift? That was my number one source back then. You know, it was Goodwill because I told you all those those um, uh, good brands. You probably will find them at Goodwill, especially if you go to these areas where you see there's a lot of wealth. You know, like a big mm-hmm. houses or you know big cars and all that golf clubs and stuff, and you find a Goodwill you probably will find really good brands like that. But right now they are putting crazy high, even fake stuff, because some some things you can tell that they are fake, you know, like a, a Louis Vuitton uh, pair of shoes or, you know, they are putting like a almost uh, $100, you know, in the Google, where they receive it probably free, mostly, all the things. And yeah, they are crazy high, but it's like ways how you can find really good good um, items for sale. For example, mom and pups, uh, three stores usually have good good inventory too. You know, you find items for one dollar, two dollars. You know, so just looking like at those three stores, like very high. You know, like a high thing, and nobody like they don't even are in the Google. You know. And you sometimes will find really good items like that because they are crazy high. What kind of categories do you sell in on the other marketplaces? Is it like more clothing or is it kind of everything? It's clothing, mostly shoes. I love shoes because, you know, I I have a lot of shoes just myself. And then doing this, I came across for a lot more shoes, you know. But I do mostly choose and I have a little bit of clothing because I can sometimes and the times that you go to the three store and you don't find mostly or many pairs of shoes, you go and get something right for, for sale because I had to get my listings going. So usually I get clothing, but mostly jeans and dresses. That's what I'm my focus. 
Because when the, you are going like a so bright, like a white, sometimes you don't come in like an expert in something and you go in there and you probably probably waste your time because you don't know what to get, you know? <laughs> so probably little bit of this, little bit of this. So, and sometimes no, those little works. So coming in the niche down for the category is the best way when you're doing a tree, a tree part. These some people though, with just plushes that you can probably buy them for 50 cents or $1, making six figure business, you know, just yeah. to find in those kind of items, which is amazing. For me, that's cool, right? <laughs> because yeah. 50 cents and they're selling sometimes for 100 or 20 or 30. Uh, one of my friends for eBay, he's selling, you know, the, um, which is cool. I am getting out of your question a little bit, but he's selling yes. even this food uh, food toys that usually you find in, in the Happy Meals back then, you know, in the 90s and oh, 80s. Yep. And he's selling a lot of things. And I, th- that is so, for me, it's crazy, right? Because he was, he's like a, who would want to find those kind of items on eBay, you know? But he's selling them. And he's so cool. He, I think he's a, he had like a 10,000 items sold just for items like that, which is so cool. Yeah, you're well, you're like perfect because so I don't know this if this happens to anyone that is maybe listening, but like I whenever I tell people I saw on Amazon, like family or friends or just like strangers that talking to out in the world, they always are like, oh, I have all this stuff in my attic that you could. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not how it works. But with you, you could probably sell it on eBay. But I'm always like Mm -hmm. because you do all of them. Right. So I'm always Mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, I sell new stuff. (laughs) It is. It's good. I'm. I what? I'm, I'll make a thing probably around sixty thousand dollars in profit just on eBay last year, which is so cool. You know, just a lot more just on eBay. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. It is. Is for me is a lot. So that's where my passion to you know find stuff over there and tell the people you know you can do in this is eBay is one of the business that you can start with no money at all in these days. And what business you can find like that, you know? Yeah, no exactly. money at all. You can go to the people, like you say, to your family, friends, and all that. Hey, you have something in there that you don't like it, you know, that you want to get a sale of all that and you don't want to, they will give you all that stuff. You know, that's how I did it back then. Yeah, like you were saying, you're just selling stuff from your house. Like you can start with, like even me on Amazon, I scanned anything that was new in my house that I hadn't opened or, um, and then used books. That's like the only time I've really ever done used books was the beginning. But I was like, these books are just sitting here. Like I was scanning everything in the very beginning, just like that. What are some of the struggles that you've had along the way in any of them? You can, you know, pick a well, but- marketplace, pick a struggle. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that Amazon, I cannot understand the part for the, the price tankers at all. I don't know if they are business people. I don't know if they have a little background. I don't know, but sometimes I've, I've, I thought that it was just for the new sellers. But lately I have been seeing the, even the people who I think they are wholesalers are doing it. And I say, why, you know, like, why are they doing that? Why they don't match the Bibles that is already in there? They had to go in there and tag the price and you know screw up all the listing because then you will have errors higher price errors in the listing and you cannot sell it for no profit at all especially if you're doing more fpn you know that's a it's semi newer like i've noticed it more in 2022 than ever before and i don't know if it was an influx of new sellers, I think it was kind of a mix, like you're saying, like it's new sellers who maybe don't understand that that's not actually how you win the buy box. And it's definitely not how you sustain a business doing this. And then there's also, you know, people I've heard of even people who were once upon a time in my community, they, they go to this other model where it's a perfectly fine model, but it still doesn't make sense to me as like you were saying as a business person where you want to make like 10% profit margin, but you're doing just like massive volume and you're scaling and that's fine. But like why ruin it for the rest of us when the thing is selling for $29, 
why are you selling it for 24 or 19? Like, there's just no reason it was selling. We have all the history it was selling. And so that part is insanely frustrating. And I know you have been doing it and I've been doing it on our social medias whenever possible, like just preaching, mm -hmm. you don't have to take the price. And we were going to get that message out there one way or another. Like, yes. you do not have to take the price. You can make more yes. money. It's a thing. <laughs> Exactly, because I know you're coming across a lot with the social media. The people say, it's not true. She's lying. She's not making that money, you know, oh, because yeah. I did it. I never make money. Of course, if you go in there and thank the price, you're never going to make money like that after you pay, you know, shipping costs and Amazon and all the fees, referral fees and everything. You ended up with pennies, probably. How are you going to make money like that if you go and thanking prices? And I think there is not enough sellers, Amazon sellers that are speaking about it and loud. Anybody, everybody uh, that are doing social media, that's what I love. I love what you do because everybody that wants to do social media and they are sellers, sellers in Amazon, they want to sell you something, right? So they are not, it's never, never tell, talk about the bad part about the part part to, you know, the struggles of, the, of their business because it's a lot of struggles. Somebody that is telling out there that nobody has been had in any struggle, I will be paying attention to that person because he's lying in somewhere, you know? Yeah. It's not true. You, do, you know what I'm talking about? How how you going and buying something for somebody that probably is lying to you? I don't understand that part too. And then I, all the time that I met somebody, I always refer to you because, you know, usually you will tell the truth about all what is this business and you have all your courses in place and, you know, and how to help the people. They don't want to put the effort at the time because I understand there are many people out there, they really don't have the time because probably they got the job and they don't have the time for learning. So they need to put, they have the money. They need to have somehow could all that process right so i understand the part of that what sellers are you know give them courses and all that but tell the truth you know don't tell mm -hmm. okay you that's what you see me sometimes in the story stories talking about it because i say you don't need to have you know to go to courses and all that because i know that many people are watching us many of them don't have money for a start a lot of them probably the majority and then, so you don't need to have money for a start or go and okay, pay your course and nothing. I start with, with your group, which is, I recommend all the time, you know, when I was already making money, you know, and I know that Amazon can pay for, you know, all that. Right. So, and I didn't understand back then, the, you know, all the methods that I had to list it. But something that I love that you told me back then, the first time that I joined one of the groups, you groups and I say just keeping it skinny, you know. Okay, yeah. that was like a fuel for me because I say, okay, look, I didn't stop to skinny after you told me that, you know, keeping skinny, 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 until I find the profit of items. But these sellers never telling you like the real truth, and they want to say you a expensive curse that is a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. I say that's crazy to me, you know, that's really crazy. You see more of that in TikTok, I think. Probably we should put more effort in TikTok because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I see that more in TikTok. And then I say, okay, all these private label sellers are telling the people that it's easy. That's the highest uh -huh. investment business in Amazon that you can do, you know? And they are telling that it's easy and it's no struggle. And I say, hmm, no. I feel like I know the ones you're, it always shows up in my feed when I because I, I I'm not on tick I am on TikTok but I'm not on TikTok very often unless I go to post something there um but there's this one that's always in there and so I think it's I don't know if it's Jungle Scout or something but I know because once upon a time I tried to do this wholesale thing but I there's a software that you can have and you pay for the software and it will tell you how much of an item will sell. So there's this person on TikTok who goes, you can get this thing on Alibaba and it's selling for this much money. And they're making it seem like they are selling it, but they are not selling it. They're they just using software. I could make the same TikTok and make it seem <laughs> like I'm selling it. And so that's why I'm always talking to people. I'm like just trying to educate like 
there are people who make YouTube videos to make money on YouTube. And then there are people like me who make YouTube videos to help other sellers get started. And also I sell, like I still selling is my favorite thing I do. I make money selling. I'm, I'm like, yes, I make money on my courses and my stuff also. But like, if all that went away, I'm perfectly fine making money, selling on Amazon, doing my own thing. Like there's that. So that's, I think that's like a super important point. And that's why I try to make it anytime I can just, just we're smart. Like just use your, like notice what they're doing and what they're teaching and what they're offering. They, are they really selling? Are they showing you numbers? Cause in, um, my January numbers, sales numbers, I can't remember exactly. I think it was either 20,000 or just over 20,000 I did in January. But my profit is like maybe 3,000 because I was just moving through junk that I had and wasn't selling. So I wasn't making profit. Yeah, my 20,000 sales number looks amazing. Who wouldn't want that? But at the end of the day, I made $3,000. I lost a lot of money on different stuff that I was just trying to move. So I'm always transparent about all of that stuff. Like there's been months when I was traveling and my focus was traveling that I made a thousand dollars profit. Like that actually there's been months I've made $2,000 gross sales. So it's like, I'm open about that stuff because I've always done Amazon part-time. It's always what I wanted because I wanted to do other things like mm -hmm. traveling. And then I just happened to fill my time with other other things but yeah that's that's why i always loved you hustle and i love to recommend you know people who say okay you want to learn about okay nikki have a lot of videos already go and watch them you know because you are true of what you do you know i don't want to to have amazon and i pretty much I think that's how you think too. I don't want to have Amazon and seen as a is a job that you have to constantly, you know, go and hitting goals, 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 goals. Because I came for that, you know, I came for that. Yeah. I had to be, you know, hitting that goal. If you know, I would lose my job. I don't want that, you know. I want to join it and see how ways how I can work less, but with more money, you know. Exactly. <laughs> because, because usually if you have a business and you are like a driven for just money, you pretty much, you will never going to enjoy your journey or what you do, you know, because all the time you think, okay, I had to eat all those bars that you see out there for me, it don't mean nothing because, you know, <laughs> because usually it's people, people right now. And I know you're coming across before you wasn't funding that much. And you're coming across that all these people making millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, it is fine. But how much you profit about that? You know, coming back or what these people are tankers, usually the, the ones that make a lot, usually they profit probably pennies of the dollars, you know, just for show. OK, and then there is my course for two thousand dollars and you got a lot of people buying that thing, you know, like, a, wow. Yeah, that's how you make your profit in the month, you know. Yeah, two or three persons to buy that curse, and then I come across with a Spanish girl that she paid like a five thousand dollars in curses, you know, for these people. And then I say, okay, so that's how they make their money, pretty much. You know, they don't make their money really selling them and proving a concept that you can make money with really Amazon, but they doing it just for selling those courses, and that's how they, you know, profit at the end. Yep. Which is just like you say, just be careful and be conscious of what people is telling you in the social media. And that's the reason I do social media, you know, because I want to be trust. It's true what you say. January and, and February for me wasn't that good. You know, I was making probably $500 or something. I was making a lot more for eBay, you know, like Amazon. But it's for the same. I want to get rid of a lot of multiples and stuff that I don't need to be in there. They don't need to be in there for April 15. So you taking whatever is, is, you can take, right? You can take the cost buy or, you know, make pennies or stuff. I know you like to keep costs low. Is there any software that you use or that like a good tool, even if you don't use it anymore, that you is think like that helped your business or helped your business? Yes, Seller Amp. It called Seller Amp. So this is a really good nugget <laughs> because <laughs> Seller Amp with you can with fifty dollars probably yeah with total of fifty dollars 
you can pretty much simulate where it's helium tain or jungle scott or whatever we just sell our amp in another um app they call Ar uh, arbitrage hero they connect with seller amp so when you connect both of them you have a really good tool that is kind of tactical arbitrage mm -hmm. the I will definitely recommend to you because it's a lot more cheaper than all those tools. And that's what I use, you know, for online arbitrage, for retail arbitrage, for anything. I love them. Both of them, whoever make them is really genius. <laughs> I have Seller Amp. I don't use it that often. I'm always like, do, does it work for the other marketplaces or do you use it for Amazon? Yeah, it works for eBay too. Oh, nice. The Seller Amp. So, yeah, so you can find items in seller. Um, they sometimes you say, okay, in Amazon is time the price, but you, eBay is selling really good. So, yeah, itself, it works for eBay as well. So, okay. usually, if you find really good product, they're selling good on eBay, usually work for Poshmark to Omerkai, which is okay. Nice. What is one of the best things about being a business owner and one of the worst things? Ooh. Worst thing I have it right now, taxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, I love numbers, love them. But all the bookkeeping part, I really hate that part. You know, the receipts and putting in place and all that. I am really bad at that thing. So taxes for me sometimes is really fun when I, I see all the numbers and everything, see all the no total number. Because I do it, I doing my numbers daily. I am really old fashioned, you know. I want to see how much I'm really making every day, you know, and that way to see, okay, you know, in seven days I can use this money for putting back and stuff like that. So taxes is for me the part they every seller need to figure out some study because it can be a really pain if you don't do it right, some study, you know. And yeah. the really good part for be a business owner is, is to have the freedom of time to be relaxed when you want, you know, go a trip when the you got one, you know, get the vacations when the you want, you know, you can prepare yourself for have that vacation because at the end, Amazon and, and even all these platforms, they are not passive income, but you can prepare and, you know, and take in when you want, which is sometimes in the work, it's so um, in my case when I was working, they don't let me go or take a day even, you know, because I had to be in there. So yeah, for me, far freedom of your time or flexibility on your time is the best thing for being a business owner. It yeah, that's the freedom of time and that you can help your family and friends and on your time and you're making enough money and yeah that's awesome it is oh you in your case that you can teach more people to have that freedom you know in time which is so cool you know you yeah because people out there they are making it you know and making dreams come true pretty much you know and, I, that's what yeah. i love about like even your story um, and like back when I worked in the corporate world, like you're going to work hard. And I did work hard for someone else's profit and bottom line. And like, and then you have to fight. I had to fight to get a raise. I had to fight to get like a promotion. And it's just like, why fight? You can just do it yourself and make what you want, work when you want, when you don't want to. Like, <laughs> exactly. And no, not just that, when the, you are in the corporate work, you know, the taxes are a lot more that you pay a lot more. It was crazy, especially if you don't have kids. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, you are at the end. You probably make a good money, but the taxes, the tax part, oh, it's crazy in these countries. Yeah. It's important, even if you're just like, even if you only go once, if you don't have a CPA or tax professional that you use, just find someone local and go have a chat with them. Because, or even if you want to do your own research on like the IRS website, there's a lot of things that you can do as a business owner that are write-offs and all kinds of things that can save. It brings your taxable income down. Um, so it can really help. Like if if anyone listening does have kids that they want to help, I know that there's 
certain amounts that you can pay your kids a year. Um, so like, obviously I'm not a tax professional. It doesn't sound like Cynthia is either. No. So make sure you go check with a real one, but there are a lot of different things, but it is, I totally understand the pain of figuring out taxes. As long as when you first start, it does not have to be an official business checking account from the bank. But if you just open a separate personal checking account, or if you have a credit card, you haven't mm -hmm. used for a couple of months and you just say, okay, starting, you know, May 1st, this credit card is all mm -hmm. business and you just separate everything. It will make your tax life a lot easier. And I have always like my first two years, I did it myself. But after that, I hired someone and oh my gosh, i it's make I'm so happy that I did, but it is an added expense because oh my God, I don't have, have to, to get me that contact. Did you contact <laughs> local? Because I want somebody to help me with that too. Nice. So now, Cynthia, I know that you also are teaching people how to do various things. So tell me, where can people find you? What are you teaching? Where do they listen in? Because you also have a podcast. Yes, I have a podcast in Spanish because that's how you know, my, I feel more comfortable and I want to get more work about this, more work out there about how to do in this business that is Amazon, Amazon reselling the part of eBay, Postman and all those platforms. So I run, I hosting a podcast they call Bellas Empresarias podcast, which is so cool because right now YouTube is rolling that part where, you know, the podcast, they will have their own podcast on YouTube and all that which is cool. I am teaching in there about how to do in Amazon, you know, to the Spanish community. And in English, I just share my journey and, you know, try to share what, you know, can you can do with doing Amazon or eBay or all these platforms, you know, that you can have a, a side hustle if you want or make a thousand dollars if you want or any goal that you have and just sharing in there in the platforms of the lady hustle and almost all the platforms you can find me and tiktok is my favorite one now nice. <laughs> it's so cool because you 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 can go viral really fast in there i love it you know so and i love to have like we was talking before that that point of view where amazon is not easy you have struggles all the time you know ups and downs and all that but have that word out there and really put the truth about, you know, this business, like any business, you know, every business have ups and downs, you know, no, it's no, because if you, it was like that, I don't know, probably passive income probably is like that, probably, but usually <laughs> the business that is actually physical work or requires physical work from you is ups and downs, right, all the time. So you can find me in the lady hustle foresee my journey, you know, in English Park and Bellas Empresarias, the Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, in the podcast, Spotify and all that in Spanish. Nice. I'll link all of that below so that people can just click and find it. Thank you so much for coming on. I'll probably have you come on later because it was just such a pleasure to chat and we'll dig into like, we'll pick like one market or maybe like Poshmark or something and we'll just dig into that because it was really a pleasure to talk and learn more about you. Thank you, Nikki. It was amazing. And I am really honored that you invited me to your podcast and I love it. So I love to chat with you all the time, you know, since we met in person too, you know, more. So I love it. And I hope to come in by. I am yeah. waiting for that part too. Let's see what platform we can dig in. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. You can, as always, check out the show notes to get all the details on where to follow Cynthia, as well as all the information and tools that we shared today on the podcast. If you've enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to follow or subscribe on whatever podcast player you listen to. Please leave me a review. And as always, you can find my YouTube channel at Nikki Kirk or the podcast at Your Selling Podcast. If you'd like to be a guest or know someone who would make a great guest, please reach out to me at podcast at yoursellingguide.com. And until next week, happy sourcing.